I could sum up uh, the U.S.-China summit uh, with an anecdote, a uh, true historical anecdote. Uh, Dr. Kissinger was meeting with Zhou Enlai <clears throat> in the mid-'70s. I was in the meeting. And Kissinger asked Zhou Enlai, what do you think of the, the impact of the French Revolution is? And Zhou Enlai replied, it's too soon to tell. <laughs> so if, after 200 years, we don't know how the French Revolution came out. Uh, after two weeks, we can't be clear on, uh, on the summit. And, and that is my basic point. I could stop right here, actually. But unlike Zagoya, I will un unveil all my secrets. Uh, the point is, it is too early to tell. We'll have to see how relations unfold over the coming months and years, beginning this July with strategic and economic dialogues. You have the officials on both sides spinning the summit outcome. Uh, <clears throat> and I think we should guard against either euphoria or cynicism. And with regard to the so-called experts commentating in, in the uh, media, I recall the old saying, which is true of these kind of meetings, uh, those who know what really happened aren't talking, and those who are talking don't really know what happened. <clears throat> so I, I mean that in all seriousness. Let's, let's not have premature judgments, either cynicism or euphoria. Now, to me, uh, I was very happy. I think all of us on this panel probably were happy this meeting took place. Indeed, the National Committee uh, I personally, and I think Evans and Don in, in our own speeches, have called precisely for this kind of informal shirt sleeve, remote location, get rid of your entourage and your scripts and talking points, and talk strategically. Uh, I was disappointed, however, that they only seem to have met uh, with only their interpreters for only 50 minutes. Uh, the rest of the meeting uh, were the usual sitting across each other from tables, which I think defeats the purpose. And 50 minutes with interpreters means 25 minutes. So that, that really was disappointing to me. Uh, I am pleased that she has invited Obama back for a similar type of informal meeting uh, sometime probably within the next six months or so, uh, not specified, in addition to their meeting, of course, at various regional and international uh, conferences. And in the meantime, they should stay, and I'm sure they will stay in constant touch by, by phone uh, and so on. Now, to me, there are two central purposes of this kind of meeting, and it really is uh, hard to figure out whether they were successful. I would call that personal chemistry and strategic intentions. Personal chemistry should not be exaggerated in terms of its importance. Obviously, nations act on the basis of national interests, not whether they like each other, uh, the leaders like each other. But it's not unimportant. Uh, and if you can, uh, not, you're not going to establish mutual trust, but maybe mutual comprehension or mutual credibility uh, so that in a crisis they can get on the phone and, and make sure that some macho ship commanders are getting us into World War III or that if there's a logjam on negotiations they can maybe make the kind of breakthrough that uh, the underlings cannot make. So I would not uh, dismiss the importance of personal chemistry and it's impossible to tell how that, this went. They're not going to spin it that they love each other, wouldn't be credible. They're not going to go out and say they came to blows and Obama, you know, landed two jabs and and she a couple of uppercuts. Uh, that wouldn't be too good a spin either. So we don't really know. It seemed like they got along uh, pretty well. In any event, personal relations are necessary but insufficient. Uh, you also need a sense of, as I say, comprehension of each other's strategic goals and red lines. Here again, it's tough to judge. I would like to know what she said when Obama asked him, what do you mean by the renaissance of the, Amer of the Chinese dream? Is this a natural uh, historical impulse you deserve given your size and growth? Uh, or is it really a, a, something that's nationalistic and worrisome? And what do you mean, Mr. Xi, by resetting great power relations? Does that mean we avoid the, the Thucydides trap? By the way, according to Graham Allison, in the last 500 years, there's been 15 examples uh, of rising and established powers, and, and war is leading peace uh, 11 to 4, I think is what it is. So uh, that is uh, important. So is he talking about that? Was he talking about, on his terms, major power? Which major power is he talking about? And we don't get involved in each other's affairs, leave us alone in human rights, respect our core interests, even if it may even include Okinawa, according to the latest press. And I'd like to know what Obama said when uh, she asked him, presumably, but do you really want to 
accept the rise of China or you want to try to keep us down? And what do you mean by this rebalancing toward Asia? Is it containment? Uh, but on balance, uh, let's not be prematurely cynical. I, I hope they had these kind of discussions. They could frame uh, more constructively specific discussions on, on other issues uh, and help make progress if you have this kind of uh, strategic uh, backdrop. <laughs>